We're with uh, Jeff Mulligan today on his dairy near Avon, New York in Livingston County. Uh, we've had a great conversation with him talking about the history of the farm and current activities. Uh, Jeff is and his family are uh, involved here. They're going to tell us a little bit about how did the dairy get started here. What's, what's the background? Okay, um, my grandfather bought this farm in 1920 and um, converted it over from uh, milking shorthorns to herd of Guernseys, which he milked in a little tie stall barn. Or I should say tie stanchion barn way back in the um, back in the 20s and uh, it was a big farm at the time 640 acres you started with uh, six I think or maybe eight teams of horses and um, it was uh, deemed the most beautiful farm in upstate New York at the time uh, it was the brochure farm sales brochure so it sat in my wall in my office um, in uh, probably so we milked Guernseys up until uh, the, in, I guess they put in the first parlor in 1958, uh, one of the first ones in western New York, um, and built a, uh, what was called a loafing barn, which was an open um, pack barn at the time. And then we built uh, free stalls in there in 1964. We were milking about 100 cows. In 1970, my father bought a farm up the road, and uh, a year or two later, we started milking cows in that barn, too. So we had two herds of cows, about 140 um, cows in uh, those two barns. And then in um, late 70s, my father was getting kind of tired. In 77, we sold out. Spring of 77, we sold all the Guernseys in. He and my uncle farmed the farm, just the, the land for which was about 800 acres at the time. And um, in the early 80s, about late uh, 1980, I became interested in, um, in milking cows again. We bought some heifers at a the New York State calf sale. My next door neighbor was Tom Coyne, lived right next door and down the road. And he was running the calf sale at Syracuse at the time. And um, and you were working with Jim Ruppert. I was working with Jim Ruppert. He, he, he and I started this whole thing. In fact, his son Jay brought in a, a whole group of cows and that's how we got started milking cows. So <clears throat> that evolved over a period of time and uh, we finally got up to about 100 milking cows with that project and then um, in 1992, we looked at it and said we were not doing very well. We got to do better. So, so we're going to expand, or we're going to be out of business in a number of years. And so, the first sec thing we did was expand to about 150 cows, and then two years later, we built our first big free stall barn and converted our parlor to a double ten. And all in all, we got to about 350 cows in 19. I guess it was in uh, yeah 1995. So where are you today then? We're at 1350 or 1300. We just sold a, a couple of the cows yesterday to Canada, so we're kind of have to keep moving them out because we can't milk them all. So we're not killing them fast enough by sending them to meat markets so or sending them to Canada and let them go to the robot herd up there. Yeah. That's working out pretty well as a kind of keep us afloat yeah. for this in this time in there. And you have a good heifer population too. We so. have a very high heifer population and it's not all, be, you know, we we don't lose many. We use, we use um, sex semen on about 50% of our heifers and um, so we've got, yeah, we're running about, right now, about 100%, well, probably even higher where the cows were sold yesterday, but um, our goal, we're putting in more and more embryos trying to get that knocked down so we don't raise quite so many heifers. So, We've not done any much genomic testing, and we're trying not to sort them that way. We've got a, um, with the market we've had selling cows, it's worked out okay. So Now, some family is active with you. Yeah. Your wife so my wife, my wife is on the farm. My daughter just came back uh, in October. She was, I have twin daughters. One's working for ABS. The other one is, that's Claire, and ABS in the Northeast. And um, Emily just came back from uh, two years at Lamb Farms managing a dairy over there and um, she's now managing our dairy. Um, my nephew has been, Forrest Watson's been on the farm running, he's running a cropping operation now for um, about, you know, he's kind of moved up in that, he's been with us about 10 years. So all in all, it's, that's, um, that's the family and that's uh, where everybody stands at the moment. Yeah. My son Aiden is at a local community college right now and planning to be going to Cornell High School next fall. And you've got uh, how many employees in all of them? So yeah, we're family. with with us with my wife and I both. There's 24 of us. Yeah, yeah. And um, quite a bit of Hispanic labor. 
Um, they do a, the majority of the all the milking and, and cattle moving, and then we have um, guys doing calves and feeding cows and herd management and the whole bit there. I mean, they're they they top to bottom, and they're doing a absolutely first rate job. What sort of production levels are you getting these days? So, our we're running about a twenty. 28,500 pound herd average, we're right around 87, 88 pounds. Um, as I was telling you earlier, we're down from a year and a half ago where we were running about 95 and less. And really good forage from before this past year's forage has just not quite got the, the level of uh, quality we've needed. Yeah. yeah. So, you, uh, you're active off the dairy too. You're on the board of directors of NEDPA, Northeast Dairy Producers Association, mm -hmm. and you've mm -hmm. said that that's been a rewarding. Uh, it's been a, it's been a that's been a very valuable time in terms of understanding what's what the industry is doing, um, uh, really knowing where things are going and how the efforts that we need to do in terms of keeping the industry ahead of where we. Um, where we need to be. I mean, if we're not looking ahead, we're in trouble. So, um, I don't always come out of those meetings feeling particularly uplifted. I feel like it's, uh, it's a, a, but it's my payback. I'm trying to get back the industry. I feel it's like they've gotten me this far. I can, I can, I can help things out. It's, um, it's good to know what's going on in the, on the um, political and the, the regulate the regulatory front. Yeah. So. You, you mentioned too, you've, you've got a, with some neighboring dairymen, uh, your partners in a really unique uh, dairy processing uh, effort. Tell us a little bit about that. So, um, I'm involved with Craig Station, which is a joint venture between um, DFA and, um, and uh, eight dairies, local dairies. Um, but put together, it's, a, it's a unique in that, I guess I can, there are a couple of them in the country now, but it was the first one that DFA did. Um, we built a processing plant which um, separates milk, and so we're making um, what we call uh, design milk for very various different plants around the country. Mostly in the Northeast, it's going to into um, New York and New Jersey and and uh, Central New York processing plants. Um, we are uh, um, currently we just finished building a cheese plant, which is another joint venture with DFA and uh, Arla Cooperative out of Denmark. Um, they are doing the process. They are doing the the sales portion of the of the um, G's. Currently, uh, mm -hmm. we are making cheddar. We've got for Arla, um, and that then goes off to Wisconsin. Gets processed to. We're making 40, 42 pound, about forty four pound blocks, and that gets processed out in Wisconsin for Arla. And um, <clears throat> the next project that we're working on is a Craig's Creamery label, which will be our own. Um, label through DFA, um, and uh, we have the one of the unique things about the Craig Station Creamery and, and Cheese um, Processing Plant is that it's the only um, plant in the country that's run off of uh, um, <coughs> electricity generated from manure and, and by waste from the from the cheese and, and milk plant. Yeah. So we're pretty excited. We've got a, a good um, traceable product. We've got a small group of farms that are really dedicated to having the um, going forward in this direction and, and hoping that we can um, make something work. Sure. So. Well, thank you, Jeff. Glad to visit with you. Uh, Jeff Mulligan in Livingston County, New York. This is Joel Hastings for DairyBusiness.com. We'll get nine minutes out of that. Yeah, I don't know what you're going to do. We'll slice and dice.